Can you explain me this? So let's take Los Angeles, right? Big city, lots of problems, crime, etc. But that was for decades. Now we have the homelessness crisis. You take 20 miles from LA, you go to 20, 30 miles, you go to Orange County, no homelessness at all. So it means it's, it can be solved. This problem can be solved, right? Why don't they? What are the benefits of having this homeless, so, mu so many homeless people in, in LA, for instance? Well, we have what's known as the Homeless Industrial Complex. That's a group of all the nonprofits that are making money off the homeless. They can't solve a problem that they lose money on. As the long as they keep receiving money from the state and from the county and the city, the homeless are here to stay because it's their cash cow. We solved homeless. We cleaned up Venice Beach. We cleaned up in front of the VA Center in San Vicente. We cleaned up Olvera Street, Topanga Canyon, Larios Park, Parnell Park. I mean, we went all over the county. We got rid of the encampments, got people into housing, and no arrests, no force. Do you think the county, the city ever said, hey, how'd you do that? We'd like to try? Mm -hmm. Never, never. It was all about, oh, there are houseless neighbors. You know, we need to support them because they can't afford housing. Yeah, you're smoking dope 24 seven. You can afford rent if it was a nickel a month. It's as simple as that. So you, you got to the streets, you did not arrest the homelessness, but you took off the campuses, the mm -hmm. campus, and you got them into a shelter? Everything. But they come back, why? They got kicked off of the shelter? They didn't come back to the places that we were working. The ones that go now into shelter come right back out because they get tired. They go back to the street and they just move around because the county and the city does not want to get rid of the problem. They're, they're trapped in their ideology that it's an affordable housing crisis and they're just going to keep throwing money at it. Yeah, but for the homeless, it's better for them to be on the streets than in the shelter? Some of them prefer the streets and the shelter, yeah. So, to me, as a foreigner, can you explain to me Skid Row? How hmm. is it a, a problem for 50 years? Skid Row going back to the 1930s. 30s, no, almost, almost 100 90. years. Why it's, not, why it's not being solved? Skid Row started with the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. There were cheap hotels, flop houses in Skid Row where people came when they migrated west, you know, the Great Migration, Dust Bowl, people fleeing the Dust Bowl. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the able-bodied men who were alcoholics, they started settling around Skid Row. So you had hostels, you had whorehouses, you had all kinds of drama happening there that slowly grew and it was contained. Oh, there's a coyote right there. Oh, wow. My family is there. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, so going back to Skid Row. So they, they came back a lot of uh, hostels. And, uh, but is it, is, can it be solved, this problem? Well, see, with the growth of Skid Row, then it came the missions. And the missions are giving out free food and shelter. Mm -hmm. And what do people do? And then the drug dealers there. came in. And then people say, oh, wait, I can get a free meal in there. I go there. And so the drug dealers go there. And now I got people hooked on drugs, not just alcohol, but drugs. And then more, more do-gooders. Oh, we need to help these people. So the more resources you devote to solving it actually makes the problem bigger. I guarantee you, if you shut down Skid Row, not a single person is going to die of starvation. They're going to move to where they get the resource. So it's basically an, a great example of socialism. Pretty much. You feed them, you give them shelter for free. They do not, don't value this and they live this way for decades mm -hmm. and decades and decades. And they'll keep coming. The more you resources you offer, the more they come. It's kind of like a porch at night when you turn on the light, mm -hmm. all the bugs go yeah. toward. As soon as you turn the light off, they all disappear. Do you, have, do you think California is about to change in a good way or it's not the rock bottom and we will feel it? 
I think we still need to hit rock bottom. We're not there yet, we're close to it, but look at the Olympics schedule for 28 or the Super Bowl in what, 26? 26, or World, Cup. World Cup. World Cup 26. We're not ready for either. We're missing so many key personnel and law enforcement, both LAPD and the sheriff. Between the two of them, they're missing over 3,000 sworn personnel. 3,000. A lot. A lot of people. And they're not going to get them either because they still have this war against law enforcement going on in their rhetoric. Do you think they're, they're going to clean up Los Angeles uh, prior to World Cup, just like they did with San Francisco prior to uh, Chinese leader oh, coming in? Ziping? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're going to try. The problem is a lot bigger than San Francisco. So the last time you had the Olympics, that was 1994? 84. 84? 84. 84. So what do you think is going to happen? Just riots? Uh, crime is going up during the World Cup? Uh, hard to say, really. Let's see with a new prosecutor, if we get one in uh, November, Nathan mm. Hockman, and they start prosecuting again. But there's so many crises going on at the same time that uh, I, just, I don't see the current leadership able to handle these properly because they're still married to an ideology that's a, an absolute failure and they won't acknowledge it. Don't you, think that, don't you think that people are fed up with this? You think, but then you look at the three supervisors that got reelected in 24 in the primary. Mm -hmm. All three. Look at Hilda Solis in 22 got reelected. And she's an absolute mind-boggling failure. There's no connection between what they do and their election. None whatsoever. It's, it's alarming when you think about it.